Hello friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the audiophiliac and I, yes, I am an audiophile and I'm also a music lover but I love, love the sound, I love sound, the sound of life, the sound of life all around me in, here in New York City, the sound of live music and in some ways even more the sound of recorded music. The, the energy that went into creating it, the technology, the humanity, the decisions made by producers and engineers and musicians to create that, re that recording, that just stirs me. It did as a little kid, it does now, and that's why. That's why I am the audiophiliac. <laughs> but today, but today, the real subject, the star of the show today, is the Project Audio CD Box DS3 CD player but before we get too far into that, I just have to make, well, two announcements. Number one <laughs> is, sadly, I will not be attending Axpona, the Axpona show in Chicago starting on the 22nd of this month. Circumstances have changed. I won't be able to be there. I was scheduled to be there, but no, sadly, I won't be there. So to everyone who's going, I hope you have the best time. It'll be great to be back at an audio show. And I will be with you in spirit. Announcement number two is one you could see coming. Yes, yes, there will be an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in today's show. <laughs> okay, no more fooling around. Let's get to the actual review of the Project Audio CD box DS3 CD player slash CD transport, meaning you can also use it with an external digital to analog converter, a DAC, right? or just use it all by itself as a CD player. It goes both ways. It's available in silver and black. It is made in Europe. In the price, by the way, I don't want to forget, is $899. And here are some DS3 specifications. As for the CD servo mechanism, it's the same one that's used in projects RS2T transport. Here's a nice picture of the inside to show you the suspension system that protects uh, the player mechanism from outside uh, vibrations. As you can plainly see, it is a slot loading machine. It doesn't have a tray that opens and closes to insert or retrieve discs. One nice touch of class is for an extra $129, you can buy external wood cheeks. They come in uh, rosewood, eucalyptus, and walnut. So two quick nitpicks. One is the DS3 does not have an internal power supply. It has an external wall wart switching power supply, which feels, I don't know, feels like for this kind of money, you should have a better power supply than this, but I'm sure it works very well. And I wasn't too crazy about the remote control. It's very small, it's very plastic. Again, it does the job, no problem. It's easy to use, but something nicer would have been nicer. As for the associated components used over the course of this review, they were, in no particular order, uh, a Pass Labs HPA1, which is a headphone amplifier that I use as a preamp, a Shit Agir power amplifier, speakers were ELAC Unify reference. So as for actually using the machine, it was a pleasure. Uh, the display, by the way, is very large, very easy to read, and that's nice. The slot loading mechanism worked flawlessly, smoothly, quietly. So as I listened to the DS3 as a CD player, not as a transport, just as a CD player, it sounded really good. It sounded as you would expect an 899 CD player to, to be. It's good. It's really, really good. But to put the sound in some sort of context, I compared it to my Oppo UDP203 as a CD player. And the Oppo, which is a highly respected machine, was thinner and leaner and mm, harder sounding. And I was playing this great CD, Fine Young Cannibals Remixed which, you know, in some ways is better than their actual normally mixed CDs. It's just really, really, really well done. Really punchy, you know, kind of grooving music. It's fun. It's a fun listen. And it was more fun with the project. It just had more 
get up and go. The bass punch was better. But tonally, that was the other thing, tonally, it just sounded more fleshed out, more, more body to the sound. Now, I will say that the oppo, which was, to put it bluntly, brighter, it did have a little better soundstage depth. And this is while I'm listening to the Fine Young Cannibals CD. So at this point, I've, I felt that the project was doing a better job playing music and, con and, and connecting me with the music. It was doing a better job than the oppo, just was. Okay, so next up was this one, Fred Hirsch's Dancing in the Dark. Now, it's a piano trio recording. I was present at the session. This is a Chesky session 30 years ago. It was done in 1992. And uh, it's a great recording, really, really good. And yeah, the piano tone and his touch were so much better. Uh, Fred Hirsch's touch on the keys, his dynamics, his subtle shifts of dynamics were well, well better played over the project than the oppo. Now, this was done in a relatively large studio, and you could hear a bit more of the room with the oppo because the oppo was brighter. The cymbals just popped out more with the oppo. But in terms of the tone of the piano, no contest. The project was the better sounding CD player. So for the next phase of this review, I decided to use the DS3 as a transport only, hooked up to a Denifreps Aries DAC. So the DAC, external DAC was converting the zeros and ones into an analog signal. <laughs> That's what DACs do. And the sound was like a better version of the DS3 on its own. It had, well, it was more 3D. That There was more dimensionality coming from it. It sounded more powerful, bigger, more potent. And uh, on Fred Hirsch's piano, it just had, it sounded like a bigger piano with the Denifreps handling the conversion process. I think we're ready. I think we're ready for it. So Steve, what do you really think? And I think the Project Audio CD Box DS3 is exactly what it's supposed to be. A 899 CD player that sounds really, really good just on its own. And if you're ready to do the upgrade thing and add an external DAC, it will take you to the next level. Having said that, I bet you three quarters of the people that buy the DS3 will be perfectly happy using it just as a CD player. And I like that it's just eight inches wide. Uh, my only real nitpick was that tiny remote because every time I picked up that plastic remote, <laughs> I, I kept thinking, this is a little plastic remote, should be nicer than this. But you know, you get used to these things. Anyway, I like it. I think it's a terrific little machine. And now, and now we can move on to the uh, closing credits with, don't get nervous, the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This one comes from Laurent. He lives in Germany. He's got, uh, he's got a lot going on here. Now his speakers are Zoo Omen Mark IIs, and they are powered by a pair of Shit Agiers running in balanced mode. For preamps, he has two, a Shit Freya Plus and a Parasound P5. For now, his digital source is just a crappy laptop. That's the way he described it. But the analog source is that sweet looking Marantz 6300 turntable with an Ortofon 2M red cartridge. For a more vintage sound, he sometimes switches over to that gorgeous Marantz 1150D, and but he's only using it as a power amp. Now here's a picture of his grandfather's Tesla B4 reel to reel. That's Wow, I'm sure there's a lot of stories that go with that one. Laurent is not standing still. He also has on order a Deckware Zen 25th Anniversary Edition amplifier. And maybe he's going to save up the cash to buy some Klipsch Cornwall 4s. Nice going. Okay, all right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac, and I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I changed my closing credits around a bit, but this time I just want to say, if you'd like to support the show, the best way to do that is to join my Patreon. You could join for a few bucks a month up to the $50 a month level. And for $50, you and I have a 15 minute or so conversations every month at the beginning of the month. 
I've been doing this for years, and some people I've really got to know. <laughs> some of my patrons, we're, we're friends. I mean, we do this all the time. We talk every single month. Of course, some people join for a month or two and then split because they get what they need. Now, of course, if you want to join for just a few dollars a month, you can send me direct emails, and I can't give usually in-depth answers to those emails, but I do do the best I can. Oh, and of course, the other big news, which isn't so new anymore, is my podcast, the Audiophiliac Podcast, which is, well, it's not this show. It's a completely different thing. It's audio only. There's no video aspect to it. And uh, I've been doing it for a few months now. It's, it's getting there a little bit at a time. You can check it out on my website. I have a website just for the podcasts. And that's linked to below. And by the way, so is my Patreon. But you could also listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and iHeartRadio, the, you know, the usual suspects for that. And of course, the other thing you can do is to subscribe. Yeah, please subscribe. And if you think I deserve it on individual episodes, hit the like button. The algorithm, I don't understand the algorithm, but I know that that's good. It's good when you guys hit the like button. Not too hard. You don't want to break something. Just hit it. Well, hit it gently. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.